Um, okay, thank you guys all for coming. Uh, we're gonna get started now. Uh, you're, if you're here, we're gonna be talking about life in Madison and we're gonna be hearing from some of the, our students at UW for Cal Demented Students Week. Um, I'm Tatum, I am a senior and I'm studying genetics and I'm a Cal's ambassador. And I'm also gonna be joined by Plea. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Plea. I'm the Prospective Student Services Coordinator. Thank you for being here. Okay, and so we're gonna be talking a lot about hopefully some topics that you guys will be interested in hearing about uh, going into your first year of college. And we're uh, gonna be hearing from, as I said, some current students. Um, they're gonna be going over some of those topics. And if you have any questions, for our student panel throughout the presentation. You can feel free to ask that in the chat. We will have a Q&A time at the end where you can also ask questions. Okay, so I will let the panelists introduce themselves. Hi, um, this is May. I'm a senior major in uh, genetics and genomics. I have a certificate in computer science. Very happy to meet you and share with with you my undergraduate experience. Hi everyone, my name is Claire and I am a sophomore here at UW-Madison. I'm studying life science communications along with a certificate in Italian. And I'm really excited to share with you guys all the stuff, great things about UW-Madison and so excited to meet with you guys. Hi everyone, my name is Dee Dee. Um, I'm also a sophomore and I'm majoring in nutrition and life, and life science communication. Um, I'm also excited to share everything about UW-Madison. I love it here and I can't wait for you all to experience it. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Paul. I'm a sophomore studying genetics in German. Um, and yeah, I'm great to, uh, or, sorry, I'm grateful that you guys are all here and I'm uh, excited to talk to you all. Okay, thank you guys for sharing. Uh, we, have, we have another panelist, Hannah, who actually is coming straight from class. So she might be joining us a little bit late, but you'll get to hear from her later in the presentation. Okay, so now I think Paul is going to, or sorry, I'll go over the presentation over you first. We're gonna be covering um, three major topics that are about residential life, different student organizations on campus and um, some recreation options at UW-Madison. And then at the end, we'll have some time for um, the panelists to answer any questions that you have. And so now I'll let Paul get started talking about residential life. Yeah, great. So um, there's a bunch of different dorms you can choose from. And if you go to the housing.wisc.edu website, you can actually get virtual tours and see inside of the inside of the dorm rooms to see where you'd be living. Um, and so it looks like these images are split up from Southeast and uh, Lakeshore, Lakeshore on the left. Um, I was into Jope, I was in a quad, so I had three roommates, um, and it was packed, but it was very fun. Uh, and the, there's a food hall right below um, uh, the residence hall, so that was nice. Um, and in terms of like walking to classes, I mean, right now it's not a problem, but uh, for Cal is kind of, no matter where you live, uh, Lakeshore or Southeast, it just kind of depends on the specific residence hall you, uh, you pick in relation to like where your classes are, but yeah. Or should I go through this, Tatum? Um, you, yeah, if you want to, that'd be great. Um, so residence halls, all admitted students are emailed a housing contract, uh, contract with a $50 initial deposit. Uh, by May 1st, you need to make a $250 advance payment to finalize the contract. Uh, after submitting contract or deposit, you can submit housing preferences and roommate selection. Uh, you can room with someone you already know or choose a randomly assigned roommate. Um, and the UW Class of 2025 Facebook group you can find online, and that's a great way to find your roommates. Um, so students are not required to live on campus, but most do their first year. And then you can contact the housing office with specific questions there. Okay, so while you're choosing the residence halls, you may notice there are specific options for some learning communities. So learning communities basically is a cohort, cohort of, of students who share a common interest. 
and a student in this cohort will live together. They live in the same residence hall and they take a seminar together and then attend some community events. Uh, so basically we have a lot of options for the learning community. Uh, just to name a few, for example, you, might, you guys might be interested in the biohealth learning community. They are uh, offered for people interested in any fields related with biology, like genetics, microbiome, neuroscience, etc. Also, like you can see there are uh, international learning community where students from around the world live together and they will, uh, it is particularly recommended for students who are learning a second or third language. And the, because I live really close to the uh, Adams Residence Hall, that's where the international learning community is. And I have, I've participated in some of the, their public events. They will host events on holidays in other cultures and which are open for uh, open to the public. Also, there are uh, there is the greenhouse. Uh, they they're recommended for people interested in conservation and sustainability. Uh, so I've heard of people going out together, uh, like uh, working in a garden or uh, restore prairie, something like that. Uh, personally, I haven't joined, uh, I never joined a learning community, but if I got a chance to choose again, I would, I would choose to join this learning community. So, uh, because, I mean, you don't lose anything and there's a, this is a great chance for you to make friends and meeting with like-minded students. So joining a learning community requires you to enroll in a one credit seminar course for one semester. And this course, uh, as far as I know, comes towards the Cal's freshman experience uh, requirement. And the seminar is related with the topic the community learning community focus on. So participating in this seminar is a very great way to learn more about this, uh, your major and making friends with people in, in the same major. Uh, also, you don't get any written homework in that one credit seminar. And I, so some ex uh, example activity you will do in this seminar are like making pancakes, you just chill together and have ice cream. I heard some people go to Chazen Museum in their seminar. So you will have a faculty as a tutor for that seminar. Uh, these faculty are uh, lecturers or uh, faculties also teaching other classes like chemistry or um, biology. So, I asked one of my friends who joined a learning community and basically the schedule for this seminar is you start with sharing some good things and bad things happened this week and then you do some activity together. Yeah, this course doesn't count towards GPA but you will get a grade. Okay, next slide. Uh, next, uh, there are several dining halls around the campus. Uh, there are six. And however, they are not open. They're only open to students living in the residence halls for now and open to uh, people work in the dining, dining halls. However, you can order food for delivery and pick up online. Uh, there's an app called Starship Deliveries which is an app you can download and order deliveries. There will be little robots who, who, who deliver food to your location. And the cost is $1.99 for delivery. Uh, these, you will see these cute little robots once you're on campus. They walk around the campus very often. You'll see them often. And if you want to pick up, there are also you can download another app called Grubhub and you can order food and pick up at a uh, pick up location near some near the uh, dining halls. It will let, uh, you can choose the location on the app. Also, if you want to know more about what food or offer uh, at a particular dining hall, you can go to the website, just uh, search for dining, uh, in the whisk.edu, the website, and you'll find this 
basically you'll find uh, uh, this web page on the right. Uh, you can see like you can filter through like allergen if you have anything you don't like to eat and the type of food like vegan or vegetarian. Um, yeah, basically everything you need is are there. Um, well, just give you a rough idea like about all these dining halls. Basically you can see this market is in the middle of the campus. Usually for, for freshmen, I took classes around the Bascom Hall. So this, mar this market is the uh, dining hall I go to most often. And you will also take classes around the um, like, uh, humanity halls, which, which is next to retest market. So I guess you'll probably go to these um, dining halls very often. Well, if you live in the lake shore, probably Four Lakes and Carson's would be your best choice. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Um, I love the foods there. I kind of miss them. <laughs> okay, next. All right, um, so I'm just gonna be talking a little bit about the student jobs here on campus. There are a lot of opportunities for students to get involved on campus and also make a little bit of money, which is very nice. Um, so basically when it comes to student jobs, um, there are a lot of different options. Um, some of the biggest ones would include like working in the dining halls. Um, so students can work to help with serving food and preparing food and cleaning up. Um, another really big one is research here on UW-Madison. Um, research is a really big thing and it's open to a lot of students. I know that most of us um, on this panel right now are currently a part of research. Um, and it was something that I started doing my freshman year. Research options can come well, for both for pay or for credit, depending on the class or what you need to do, which is really nice. Um, also, we have a lot of like other different facilities here on campus, so like the gym. Um, I currently work at one of our new gyms called the Nicholas Gym. So there's a lot of student workers there. And when it comes to finding a student job, um, a great way to start is go to your UW-Madison portal, and then you'll click on the Student Center. And when you click on that, there should be an icon that's called like student jobs. And basically it takes you to a web page that has all these different types of student jobs, both on campus, um, off campus. You can narrow it down if you wanna work in research, if you wanna do maybe something with a specific department, things like that. Um, housing also offers a lot of jobs. If you've spent a year in resident halls, you can also apply to be an RA, which is a great way to get your living covered um, and still kind of be a, a part of the housing community. So for that, you can check out the website. It's um, below on the slide, the housing.wisc.edu jobs slash students. So it's a great way for you to like get to meet a lot of other people, make some money and, you know, just be a part of another organization on campus. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some student organizations. Um, and so I will briefly talk about some of these. There's a bunch of student organizations on campus, um, which Didi will talk about later. But, oh, hold on. But we um, also wanted to highlight some of our Cal student organizations. Um, so there's over 30 that are student organizations particularly associated with Cal's. Um, and I think that Hannah is joining us right now. And if she wants to um, talk about the Cal student organizations, she's actually a part of a couple. Um, the one that I can talk about is Cal's Ambassadors, which I'm part of now as we all are, um, which is a great organization that I really enjoyed being a part of, but I'll let Hannah take over if she's ready. Hi, sorry, I just got out of class, but um, yeah, so there's over 30 Cal student orgs. And one reason that I like being involved is not only it like adds to my resume, but it gives me like leadership experience and it also helps me like gain skills and experiences that I'll use in the future. So um, one Cal student org I'm involved in is called JUST and that's on the right-hand side, the Journal of Undergraduate Science and Technology. 
And so it's a biannual research journal and it just publishes peer reviewed research and editorials and just helps like highlight undergraduate and like showcase research. And then um, there's a lot of different clubs that incals and student orgs that align with majors such as the dietetics and nutrition club or like the undergraduate genetics association. And then there's also clubs that align with interests and it's super easy to get involved and meet people. So, yeah. Hi, so um, along with all of what Hannah was talking about, there are also a tons of um, very popular student organizations that are off, like a bit more off campus. So versus like, let's say you're majoring in nutrition and you join nutrition, that's great. and. Um, you'll definitely like that, but there are also things you can do outside of like strictly your major, strictly academic. So there are over 800 different organizations. Um, at the beginning of um, the next semester, or really every semester, there's a student org fair where you can go. This year it was virtual and you just like join and you see all these different clubs with all these different interests. It's like really random stuff like you can pr pretty much find anything you're interested in and I know you can also start your own club if you um, want to. For me, I am um, in Greek life right now and I am on board. I'm the academic director of my um, sorority, which is a really fun experience, like a bit different from like just focusing on school, which is really great. I'm also in the club called HOSA, which is um, health occupation students of America and this is basically a club for all like health related students and we hear from um, peers or um, professionals about life in medicine or in science at all um, which is really cool um, yeah I also was in the art club for a while and that was very easy and nice um, once a week like I painted and um, talked to like fellow peers in the club, which was great. Okay, so there's always a bunch of stuff to do on campus. Uh, there's just a couple of them. They got the Union, uh, South Memorial. There's two, two different buildings where uh, students can kind of go and just uh, get together as a community, I guess. Um, there's the Terrace, uh, two gyms, um, the Lakeshore Path and Picnic Point. The Lakeshore Path is about a uh, four and a half mile walk um, the whole Lakeshore Path and then Picnic Point's about two miles. Um, you can see that in the middle bottom picture down there with the, uh, with the signs. Um, and there's State Street, which, I mean, there's always something going on there. That's the, uh, middle picture on the right. Um, in the bottom left, that's the, uh, the Terrace by uh, Memorial Union. Um, you can always get food and just kind of hang out there. Um, in the top right, they have the Nick Recreation Center. It's just this, this crazy gym with, like, I think it's three or four floors. Uh, they got a swimming pool, a basketball court, a bunch of treadmills, places to lift weights. Uh, the top floor has a, a whole track you can run around on. Um, and, you know, there's always just something to do. Uh, usually without COVID, there are seasonal activities, too. Uh, in 2019, there was a, a freak fest, and they had a Lil Yachty there to, uh, to sing, which is kind of surreal. But you know, there's always stuff to do on campus. So besides being on campus and being part of the UW um, community, Madison itself is just an amazing town and such a fun place to be. So there's lots of things that you can do outside of UW campus. Um, so there are so many different things. And that's what's so fun about being here in Madison. It's like the perfect size city where you're still part of the campus while still being able to kind of like walk a little bit and you're part of like a whole different part of the community. So when it comes to like things to do kind of off campus, Madison has a ton of restaurants and not just on State Street, but all around ranging from lots of different Asian cuisine, gyros, um, there's donuts, there's all these different coffee shops. So that's one of my favorite pastimes along with my roommates is trying different restaurants, trying different coffee shops, so many amazing places to try out all local, which is so fun. Um, we also have a lot of amazing just like they're shopping all on state street nearby um there's the arboretum which is this beautiful space um owned by uw that just has lots of different trails and hiking paths um really just a quite a scenic place to go um, and it's not too far from campus um there are lots of different museums as well Tazen is uh, on the campus but there are lots of different museums and theaters so when it's not covid season or when there hasn't, when there hasn't been COVID, um, 
lots of different shows, performances, theater, um, music, movies to see. Um, we also have a zoo that's not too far from campus. It's a small little zoo, but it's definitely something fun to do. Um, I think it's free, so all you have to do is just walk and walk to it, and there are lots of different animals, and it's just a fun activity, not to mention lots of different parks, running trails, uh, bike paths. Um, Monona Lake is not too far from where we are, and it has a really amazing biking path for, uh, for early anyone. So Madison has a lot of different opportunities, not just on campus, but also off campus. Okay, great. So thanks ambassadors for that nice overview of some stuff to do on campus. Um, and so now we're gonna open it up for questions. So if any anyone has a question, they can uh, ask in the chat or they can raise their hand and um, unmute themselves and ask that way. Um, so I'll wait a minute, see if anyone's got any initial questions. Looks like Rainy has got a question. Oh yeah, so um, you said there, there will be a, like a workshop at the beginning of each semester that we can go to and get to know about each student organization. Yeah, uh, did you wanna talk about that? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. so my freshman year I went. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Rainy. Sorry, uh, my question was when when will that when is that workshop? Yeah, so usually it's probably within the first um couple of weeks of like the start of your freshman year. And it's really for any age, any year to go to. Um, and when COVID was not a thing, we all went, it was like in like the basketball, the Cole Center, which is like a huge stadium. And you just kind of walked around and every different student org was there like presenting, like telling you to sign up and you would just put your email down. Um, and it was really easy. I know this year with COVID, it was more of like a Zoom virtual um, fair. I did not attend it because I'm in a ton of student orgs already. Um, but I heard that it was like very easy to go to and hopefully it'll be in person next year. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it looks like Emma asked a question, how big is the genetics major and how many people are generally in classes? Um, you know, I don't have an exact number on the genetics major. I'm a, I am a genetics major, um, but people in classes really depends on what class. Uh, a lot of the CALS majors are taking the same CALS requirements, um, and those are big like genetic or the chemistry, biology, physics. Those are really big classes, a couple hundred people. Um, you'll take a genetics like core class uh, 467, 468, which is smaller. And then as you take your genetic electives, those are typically even smaller. So like this is the same for most majors, but the uh, further you get into your major, the smaller the classes are. Um, and so Charlotte's asking, did you guys mainly sign up or get matched with a roommate randomly? Or do most people room with someone they already know? Um, if everyone wants to talk about at least a little briefly how they met, they met their roommate or how they decided on what roommate to room with freshman year. I think yeah, I can talk, okay. I can talk about that. Uh, so I, I chose random and um, random roommate and it ended up well. Um, I, I would say I have a lot of friends. I know like they uh, know their roommate beforehand, like on social media, but I just choose random. It's not that scary, I would say. <laughs> and I chose my roommate from the Facebook. Like I didn't know her at all. And just a lot of our interests kind of lined up. So um, that's how I chose her and it worked out really well. Um, a lot of people choose their roommate based on like which dorm they want to be in or different things like that. And then like looking at their next question, like, is there a way to meet roommates without social media? Um, honestly, like surrounding high schools to your area, but a lot of people either meet their roommate through social media or going random, I would say. I um, met my roommate off of Instagram, um, which was cool. It was just like, a bunch of girls were following me. I was following a bunch of girls that like were mutual friends or step friends of friends of friends, stuff like that. And um, I ended up loving her. She's my best friend to this day. 
Um, as far as social media, Hannah's kind of right, especially I would say now, like usually I would say during like store or orientation in the summer, like that would be a great place to meet um, people. But um, just because of everything being virtual with COVID and stuff, I think it might be a bit difficult um, to meet roommates not via social media. Okay, great. And I had a similar experience as well. Um, okay, the next question, uh, looks like Emma's asking, are there ways to visit the campus this spring or take a campus tour? Um, unfortunately, we're not doing any official tours this spring, um, but what the school has been doing are um, virtual tours. We did one for CALS. Um, which hopefully will be up on our website or linked on our website soon. Um, but that is a good way to kind of get a feel of campus to kind of look at videos. Um, okay, and Chloe is asking, what are the best and closest nature areas? Does anyone want to talk about some close um, parks and lakes, nature areas? Sure, um, I can talk about that. Um, so Madison, what's great about Madison is it got, does have a lot of different parks and nature areas. Um, the biggest one, or probably like the one like immediately on campus would be the Lakeshore Path that kind of connects the campus from kind of by Memorial Union all the way down um, past like the Lakeshore um, uh, resident halls, um, you know, and all the way to Picnic Point, which extends um, farther down. We also, like I mentioned, there's the Arboretum. So that's not too far off of campus. It's a little bit of a walk, but um, definitely worth it. Also, um, there's uh, Lake Mendota and Lake Monona. So those are both two very close lakes on campus. Lake Monona for sure has a biking path. Um, I know that people also can just walk around. Same with Lake um, Mendota. It's, you know, a very like commuter friendly lake for people to walk around. There's lots of different parks, there's different like, beaches, kind of like grassy areas that people can hang out with. Um, there's also just a lot of parks nearby. Um, I'm trying to think what else. We have a couple of like gardens here on campus as well. Very quaint. There's one right by the Leopold um, residence hall. It's really beautiful, great little space to walk around, very peaceful, especially in the summer and springtime. Oh, also, and we have the, uh, picnic point. I know there is like uh, an area called Biocore Prairie and in the summertime they uh, I think the Madison Autobahn will do uh, bird banding there. I've been uh, I went bird banding with them before so usually they go uh, around like seven in the morning on Saturday or yeah on Saturday and then they spend uh, basically a whole morning there. Um, it, so the picnic point is pretty close to the campus. Uh, it's like around 10 minutes or 15 minutes walk from the job. Yeah, uh, if you like to have uh, like ha like going around taking pictures or watch birds, it, I, I would highly recommend this, app, this place to you. And also you can have picnic or like a bonfire at the picnic point. They will provide you with uh, woods and and you just need to bring anything that can light up a fire there, then you can have a, a bonfire. Yeah, one of my favorite things about coming to Madison was like realizing there's like so much cool stuff to do around. And um, um, I think it, Claire mentioned like it's really bike friendly. And even if you don't have a bike, you can rent like B cycle, which is um, just like bikes that you can check out for a couple hours at a time. And so Rainy asked, what's the name of the one credit course that we need to take in order to join the study group? And I think uh, Rainy referring to our uh, learning community, which I think May was talking about that. Um, do you want to talk about the, the yeah, course for learning community? Sure. So that course, um, so you, that's how the process uh, went. Uh, you start choosing the learning community while you're choosing the uh, residence halls. And after that, I think when you uh, pick up courses, there there is a place you can just look for the one credit course. Or well, actually, I've never been in a, a learning community. I hope I wonder if anyone has 
joined that before, but you will pick this course during uh, the time you pick other classes. And you only have to enroll for one semester. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question or are there any confusion? Um, I mean, I don't know where to choose classes yet, so I'm still quite confused, but I guess I can figure it out when I'm choosing classes. Yeah, uh, so after you come here, you will, like there's a um, activity called SOAR. So at that time, like there are people, uh, mentors and faculty teach you how to choose class and you will uh, pick up your classes during SOAR. So don't worry. Okay, sounds good, thank you. No problem. Yeah, I just also wanna add when you come to SOAR, um, you'll work with your advisor and they'll help you choose what classes to take your first year. Um, and then when you come to SOAR, the name of your residence hall will be on your um, student information packet. So the advisor will work with you to make sure that you are enrolled for that one credit seminar with that learning community. So you'll be taken care of when you're at SOAR. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, so it looks like Alec asked, would you recommend the CALS Quick Start program? Um, and I think, Claire, did you do Quick Start? I did. So you want to talk about um, that a little bit? Yes, of course. I loved CALS Quick Start with all my heart. It was probably one of the best decisions I made coming into college. Such an amazing experience. I know with COVID, this year has been a little bit different, so not quite the same. But it's really quiet and easy experience and such a great way to meet people and learn about the campus. Basically what happens if you do register for Quick Start over the summer before you come to campus, you'll be taking um, basically a, essentially a one credit class. And it's really just teach, trying to teach you all about UW Madison, um, all the different things we have. So they kind of show you like all the different resources, the core values of UW Madison all these different majors and kind of exposes you to everything CALS and UW-Madison related. And this will also um, take care of that freshman seminar required um, credit that all freshmen need in CALS. And then the second half of it is optional, but open to all the SOAR students where, or excuse me, all the CALS um, Quick Start students where they can actually move onto campus another week or two weeks early before the rest of the campus moves on moves in, you move into your um, assigned resident hall and everything. And basically it's another one credit where you're able to actually like physically like meet everyone who's been in the Quick Start, participate in lots of different seminars, um, toured various different labs and other um, resources or other things. Um, people will lecture you about different resources. You'll get to meet with different CALS alumnus and everything like that. Um, so it was great. I actually currently live with two of the girls that I met through Quick Start, and they're like two of my best friends here on campus. So I highly recommend it to everyone. Thanks, Claire. And I was I was also on Quick Start, and then everything Claire said is true. It's I would really recommend it. Um, okay, looks like Noah's saying, how difficult would you say your academics and CALS have been so far? Um, does anybody want to talk about? course rigor. One thing I'll say about that is I think it really depends um, on how many classes or what classes you're taking at the same time because in Cal's like there are a lot of challenging classes that um, are you know essential to your major especially but um, if you manage which classes you're taking uh, in which semester, then it can be a lot more manageable if you're not trying to take on too much at once. Looks like May, do you wanna add to that? Yeah, um, I agree with what you said and that depends highly on your schedule, but generally speaking for genetics major, I feel like the, uh, the hardest course like in terms of GPA killer are always the info courses. And when it gets to later higher level course, I think it's, well, it's easier to get a higher GPA and it will be much more interesting than the intro courses. Yeah, that's what I feel and the class size is smaller. So currently all the course I'm taking genetics major are around, there are around like uh, 30 or 40 people. Um, and I've also taken courses with 
around like 20 people, like a seminar course. So uh, I think generally speaking, things get easier when you are a senior. <laughs> okay, thanks, May. Um, so it looks like Rainey's asking, how could I choose a residence hall that is closer to where we take classes before we select our classes? Does anyone want to talk about how they chose what residence hall to do based on location maybe? Uh, yeah, I could. Uh, when I was looking, I looked purely at the actual dorm rooms and the sizes um, and not the relation to like how far my classes would be. And that was a mistake because uh, Dijop is a very far walk from most classes. Um, but you can like look, you can open a map and then most of your uh, classes are going to be around Ingram Hall area uh, by Van Heis, uh, Van Vleck. Um, so all the residence halls generally kind of surround that area, but there are definitely residence halls that are closer to that centralized area for freshman classes. Um, I lived on the southeast side, which is like Witty, Celery, and Aug, um, and, I, and I think Smith is like a little bit farther, and um, it's, it was definitely like a walk to classes, but I also think that this campus is so big that wherever you go, it's going to be a walk. Um, but it's also great, like it's beautiful here and um, I love walking to class. Um, but I think choose your residence hall based more on like the space and preference of however many roommates you want. And if you find a roommate, like maybe the roommate has interest in something or something like that. I don't think I would, like I personally wouldn't choose it on how far it is to get to class because your classes are gonna change second semester. They could be farther away. Um, and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, I think Didi brings up a really good point too, um, because um, you never really know where your classes are going to be. A lot of Cal's classes are closer to Lakeshore dorm, but sometimes, especially as a freshman, you might have a class a lot farther away. Um, and one thing to think about is if you have classes like all over campus during the day, you might not be going back to your residence hall between classes, you can just stay um, kind of on campus to get your work done. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Emma is asking, do any of you know if there are any undergrad opportunities relating to genetic counseling? Um, and I'm not, I don't know if we've got any panelists that are interested in genetic counseling. Um, I know that in, um, I think it's UGA, which is like the genetics club on campus, um, they do, like a lot of people that are interested in genetic counseling are a part of that organization. And I know that they talk to a lot of people that are genetic counselors. Um, I'm not sure if there is a specific club devoted to genetic counseling, although I it wouldn't surprise me if there was. Does anyone else know anything about genetic counseling? No, okay. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Um, okay, Sam's asking, what do I look up on Facebook to meet roommates? Uh, can I, one of you guys who met your roommate on Facebook kind of explain the process more? Um, I can really quick. Uh, I think that Paul linked the Facebook page, but you can also just type in UW Madison class of whatever year 2025 potentially for you guys um, and it should pop up and you would have to, I think they're typically private groups so you would click to join it. Um, and basically there people just kind of post about themselves, maybe like a handful of pictures so people can kind of like know your face, get to know you, uh, maybe post some very um, kind of general information. It's typically just kind of a general way to get your face and your name out to the whole community and everyone who's considering going to UW Madison. And then kind of from there, it comes down to like deciphering like, oh, this person looks interesting. Oh, I share X, Y, and Z interests. And then you kind of like would message them and if they message you back and maybe you like share socials and then you kind of continue talking. And, you know, I some people have talked about it being kind of like almost like online dating, which I find funny, just, you know, talking to a lot of people trying to get to know about everyone, trying to share about yourself, because um, you're going to be living with this person. So yeah, I just definitely check out the Facebook group. It's not the only way, but it's definitely a very common and fun way to get to, and also just to like learn about people, maybe find a few friends before you even get on campus. So yeah. 
Great, thanks, Claire. And then, Dee Dee, do you mind answering uh, Emma and Rainey's question? So, kind of what Greek, Greek life is and what it looks like on campus? Yeah, sure. So, um, first, Emma's question um, about the size. I just looked it up and about 5,000 um, students are participating in Greek life. And um, that's really not a lot for you to be Madison. It's about like 12-ish percent of the school. But when you're in it, it feels like a whole large community of its own. So like it feels, it basically can feel as like big or small or whatever as you want it to. Um, and okay, so what Greek like Greek life is, is basically a community where there are sororities for girls and fraternities for boys. And um, you can join and basically like um, be like with a smaller group of people. And um, there's um, anything in it from like academics, you like study together to like, there's a social life aspect of it. Um, really there's like, it's kind of just like a way to make UW feel a bit smaller. Um, and you join a sorority um, kind of like the pro at least the process for um, girls is like you rush and you look at all of the sororities and they look at you and you kind of match with the one that best fits you. Um, so you're with girls that are very similar to you. I am currently a sophomore um, and I actually live in the sorority house this year with 60 other girls, which is really fun and a great experience. Um, and I like made a ton of friends this way. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, go ahead and ask. Okay, thanks, Dee Dee. Um, oh, sorry, someone asking. Oh, yeah, I just also wanna to add too that there are also like different like social fraternities and things like that that are co-ed as well that are maybe like a little bit more specific. Um, so like what CD was talking about, those are pretty broad. So like lots of different majors and lots of kids with different interests can all be in that one sorority. And then there's like some smaller like fraternities that are co-ed, maybe for business. Um, I know we have an agricultural one that's um, kind of under Cal. So you can definitely check those out too. Yeah, okay. Thank you guys. Um, so again, continue to ask any questions that you have in the chat. Um, okay, Rainy, someone mentioned a health-related student organization. Could you repeat the name of that? Was that Dee Dee, I think? Yeah, that was me. Um, I'm in HOSA, which is um, Health Occupation Students of America. Um, there, are t there are a ton of organizations like along those lines. I know there's like one pre-med life um, and there are a ton of others and they're all great ways to meet new people and figure out more about your future. Okay, thank you. And so, yeah, again, continue to ask questions. I'm going to pose a couple to our panelists too. Um, in the meantime, thinking back to like February a few years ago when I was deciding where to go, at this point, I hadn't decided UW. And um, I was just wondering what made you guys decide to go to UW? I can speak on that. So I, my freshman year, or before my freshman year, I attended like one of these things in person, specifically about CALS. And it was before I decided to come here too. And just talking to students and learning more about the programs, I realized how similar I am to the students that go here. So I wanted to make sure that like I was part of, could like fit in with the culture and things like that. And like doing well in school is important to me, but also like having fun is important to me. So I wanted a good balance of that. And it seemed like students at the school like really got involved as well as like did well in their classes and then still like made time and like went to Badger football games and stuff like that. So what really solidified it for me was coming to campus and like meeting other students and participating in events like this to see like how I fit in at this school. Hey, thanks, Hannah. Um, okay, looks like Emma's asking, are any of you pre-med and what is it like at Wisconsin? Your major is global health and you wanna go pre-med. Um, I know Dee Dee is pre-med. Um, I'm not sure about anybody else. Uh, she might be away from the um, camera right now, but I can talk a little bit about that. I'm also um, planning on uh, going pre-med. 
um, at Wisconsin. There's not a pre-med major, but it looks like you know that you're a global health major, um, but you are, um, all the pre-health students are taking a lot of similar classes. Um, like genetics, my major and global health, I'm sure a lot of the required classes are also the classes that you're required to take going into medical school. So basic uh, uh, chemistry and biology and physics. Um, and there is also, as we've been talking about, there's a bunch of different student organizations that you can get involved with that are strictly pre-med. Um, I think there might even be a fraternity that's pre-med. And so there's a lot of um, different places to meet other pre-med students and get access to resources or to uh, interact with people who are in the medical field. Um, I would also talk about um, pre-health advising, which is a service on campus that uh, people who are interested in going into medical school or um, doing any other like health related like um, MD, DO, um, I can't think of anything else right now, um, like PA school, anything like that. Yeah, Plia just sent it in the chat, which is great. That's a resource that you can uh, reach out to. As a freshman, I think that they're still doing Freshman Fridays where you can go and um, talk to an advisor um, from CPH. And then as you become older and you get closer to becoming uh, a medical student, um, you can um, have like one-on-one -on -one appointments with an advisor and they can walk you through what classes to do, what um, uh, like extracurriculars are, in, are um, good, what kind of jobs you can do. So there's, like, there's a lot of different resources. Um, and yeah, it's first year Fridays. Um, okay, but that is a big resource that I would definitely be aware of if you are planning on doing any pre-health. Um, on campus. And so hopefully that answers your question. Rainy is asking, how safe is it on campus and off campus? Um, does anyone want to talk about safety? Sure, I can take a stab at it. Um, basically, I mean, we're at, so when it comes to safety, we are a very, very big campus and we're also kind of tucked within the city. So you do have to take that into consideration. We our campus is not gated. We are, you know, people uh, walk all around and you're able to like freely exit the campus and everything like that. I'm um, going to say with that, um, I think Madison's a very safe area. It really just comes down to um, when we have a lot of really great resources to help students feel safe. And um, so we have a, something called Safe Walk, I believe, which is a service provided by students for students. So like, let's say you are studying late at a library um, and don't feel comfortable walking by yourself, you can call them up and they will meet, two people will come with you and they will walk you to wherever you need to go. Um, we also have the safety, um, like emergency blue buttons all around campus, um, some on the Lakeshore Pass, some kind of down towards State Street um, and all over various parts of the campus. So if there was ever a situation where you did feel very unsafe, those buttons are pretty readily, readily available for you to push and um, help would come right away. Um, also, just to tell you on SOAR, SOAR will also give a lot of different great resources when it comes to like UW Police, um, UW Madison Police, uh, the Campus Police, um, various different safety and security options. Um, but I mean, I feel very safe here. It's a great campus, but you do have to know it is a big campus and we are a part of the city, so. Okay, thank you, Claire. Um, and yeah, Plia sent more information about SafeWalk in the chat. Um, and if anyone else has any more questions, continue to send them into the chat. But I wanted to uh, then ask our panelists, um, everyone was, on campus or living on campus for their first year. Um, and I was curious how you guys all decided how to um, determine your housing preferences when you were doing that a few years ago, what kind of things you were considering. Um, okay, so for me, um, a couple of the things that so I lived in Whitty, which is Southeast. Um, a couple of the things that I considered is I went to a very small private um, 
school for high school. And so I wanted like a huge dorm and I wanted the chance to like walk in every day and meet someone different, like in the elevator. Um, so that was kind of um, narrowed it down. Also um, kind of location wise, I really liked Southeast because it's not too, too far from classes. And it's pretty close to like restaurants and State Street, which is kind of the main um, like street where everything um, like non-school related is. Another thing that helped me choose was my um, roommate also wanted a Southeast dorm. So um, for our preferences, we just put like number one, Witty, two, Celery, and three, Aug, which are like um, all really the Southeast dorms and we didn't really care which one we got. Okay, thanks, Didi. Does anyone from uh, Lakeshore want to talk about their dorm or how they decided to choose that dorm? Could you say the question one more time quick? My, uh, my internet kind of cut out when you were. Oh yeah, so Paul, I'm just asking what kind of things you were considering when you were um, ranking preferences for housing. I know you were in Dijon. Um, so if you could talk about like how you made that decision. Mm -hmm. I also just really like nature. Um, and so it's on the lakeshore path. I just thought it'd be nice to um, go out and kind of be right next to the lake whenever I wanted to. Um, and then in the winter, it's not as nice, um, but it's definitely just a really nice place to live. From my window, you could see the entire lake. So um, it's very scenic. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And what I yeah, found is I a lot of people, oh, sorry, I'll let you talk in one second. I was just gonna say a lot of people seem to meet all their friends for a lot of their friends in where they live their first year. Like I know everybody that I'm living with now is from uh, Lakeshore dorm. Um, sorry, but go ahead, whoever was sharing. So I can talk about my experience with a uh, selector residence hall. Um, I don't remember how I uh, ranked the preference, but uh, selector is basically uh, at the trip circle. It's not uh, as far away from the campus as the job, so usually I walk to all my classes. Uh, I think if you live like uh, in the job, there, sometimes you can't get into the bus. I heard people complaining about that, but uh, if you're living uh, in a dorm at a trip circle, basically you, you can easily walk to any classes within 15 minutes. And personally, I really like this water because I think if you're, you're a freshman and we're taking like the all the intro courses like chemistry, calculus, or bio. This dorm is like I think it's in the center of the universe. Like that can take you to the like all the courses, like, a, a lot of the intro courses within five minutes. Um, yeah, I I think I like Selector. If, in terms of suggestion, how to rank your list? Just I would say just follow your heart and. It's kind of random, I think. <laughs> Thanks, May. Um, looks like Rainy, you've got your hand up. Do you have another question? Yeah, sorry, could you repeat the name of that? Uh, or how, yeah, what's the name of that? Uh, Resident Hall? Oh, yeah, it's Slickter. Uh, Lutke oh. Slickter. L E U D K T S L I T C H E R. If I remember correctly, yeah, it's kind of, it's an old dorm, but it's really close to Carson Dining Hall. Ah, uh, okay. There are a lot of residence hall around Trip Circle. They are all pretty nice. All right, thank you. No problem. I believe it's spelled like that. I always I never remember. <laughs> um, I think that's right. It's like your hall. Yes, that's um, correct. Okay, good. Um. And May actually just brought up another thing, which I um, which I think is important, is the buses on campus. Um, there are several buses that are um, like Madison um, Madison City buses that go through campus. And as a student, you get to ride all the buses for free. You get uh, your WIS card, which is like an ID card, allows you to ride. Um, some of the buses now with COVID, you also get like a bus pass normally. Um, and then there are some buses that go centrally through campus that you don't even need to scan your bus pass to get on. And that makes it really easy to get to classes without if you don't wanna walk and allows you to go farther off campus. Um, so if you really don't wanna walk to classes, 
um, and you're not sure where to live. Another thing to consider is you might not have to walk if you can um, just take a bus there. Um, and so then also, if we don't have any more questions in the chat, I was wondering if uh, our panelists could talk about what kind of organizations they're a part of and I, like how they became a part of that org and uh, like what the time commitment is for their organizations. Um, so one organization I'm in that you guys might be interested in, um, I played an orchestra first semester this year and last year. And um, out of that orchestra, there was a club called the Medical Sciences Orchestra. And through that, you, as a, as a pre-health undergraduate, you got to play with medical students and actual physicians. Um, and so my, uh, my stand partner was like a like MD, PhD physician. <laughs> it's pretty intimidating, but it was a, it was a very cool experience. And also... Um, it's a really great way to talk to people. Um, one club that I'm in uh, is known as Her Campus. So it's not an exclusively Madison club. It's um, like a national club and each many different campuses have chapters. And what it basically is, is it's um, an online women's uh, kind of like a magazine kind of written for college women by college women so that's been a really fun experience just um it's a pretty small club compared to maybe like um a club more general like a uh, like med club it's pretty small um and it's pretty much all exclusively women and we probably meet every other week and we typically will write like about two articles a week, but it's been very fun, just a fun kind of creative outlet to like write about anything that I want to meet with a lot of different other girls that I might not have otherwise met. Um, and they like a lot of clubs here on campus will do things like socials and stuff where they'll do like fun events for you to like actually kind of like meet with your club and kind of have like a fun relaxed way. So that's been a great experience here at UW for me. Okay, um, thank you guys for sharing that. And then I also wanted to ask, um, I know right now with um, COVID, a lot of the events that um, normally go on on campus are, we're unable to do, but there are typically a lot of events for students to get involved in, especially when you live in the dorms, they have like dorm specific events, but they also have uh, events going on at the unions, especially at, like the beginning of the year. I was wondering if any of the panelists wanted to talk about some UW sponsored events that they attended, they thought were fun. And if not, that's okay. Um, I know I, oh, Claire, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I just wanted to share one. I know I distinctly remember Union, the Memorial Union does put on a lot of fun ones. Um, but the winter carnival that was really fun uh they put up what they call lady liberty so it's kind of like from lady liberty's like nose kind of up it's like a really big blow up balloon um and that was really fun you gotta go out onto the lake and people gotta like take pictures with her um but they also had like different foods and like i think they had like a snowboarding competition or something like that so that was one really fun event Okay, thanks, Claire. And yeah, um, that's like a really fun thing to do in the winter. I know during the summer or when it's warmer out at the um, Memorial Union, they have live music a lot of the time. Um, and there's always a bunch of different stuff going on around campus. Um, and so we can um, still answer any of your questions, but I just want to look at this slide really quick. Um, so you guys are here for our Admitted Students Week. I just want to mention that there is another event on Friday where we've got some people to, to come and talk about academic opportunities. So that's a really good resource. And then we are also doing a Admitted Students Week in March and one in April. In March, we're doing another majors panel with these majors highlighted. And we'll be doing a panel like this, but we're gonna talk about undergraduate research. And then in April, our panel is gonna be on how to study and pick classes. So if you're interested in any of those panels or any of the majors, 
um, or any academic opportunities, uh, you can go and register for those events, just like you registered for this one. Um, and so I'll leave the chat open if anybody's got any more questions. Um, and if not, I think it might be good to end um, by asking our panelists if they've got any advice for incoming students. And Plia just sent the link in the chat. So do our panelists have any um, advice about something that they wish they knew coming into college? Yeah, something I wish I knew was that um, every time I was like, I'm struggling in classes or like, I don't know what to take or stuff like that. There's always a resource available for that. Your advisor is such a good person to ask questions to. And also I learned that the internet, um, like UW-Madison's website has pretty much everything on it. So if you ever um, have any questions, try like just a Google search before um, like freaking out about anything. Um, there are so many helpful resources that I had no idea about really until um, I became an ambassador and kind of learned more about them. So yeah, there's always like ways to get help. I was also going to mention there's so many resources on campus, but also I think everyone ends up where they're supposed to be with college and um, just like follow what's right for you and um, just like get involved and take any opportunities that you can. That would be my advice. Picking back off of that, I think, you know, college can seem, especially on such a big campus like UW that has so many different opportunities, so many different clubs, so many different like avenues that you can take. Um, be open. Your freshman years are just a great time to kind of learn about yourself, what you're actually interested in. Um, like Didi said, there's a ton of resources. So don't forget, like, you know, we're here to help you. UW Madison's here to help you. We all want you to succeed. Um, and this is just a really fun and great atmosphere to learn about yourself, to learn and, you know, find future friends and amazing careers. I would suggest um, just do anything you want, like you're interested in, like take a job and try different stuff. If you're really interested in that and you're not sure what major uh, what career you will do in the future. The best way to know is just try it. And there's never like too, too late or too early to do that. Um, yeah, join like join a lab early or take a job early. That's what I suggest. Hmm. Okay, thank you guys so much. And so thank you all for coming to this event and thanks to our panelists for sharing. Hopefully this was helpful um, and hopefully we'll see you again at some future panels. Everybody have a good night and thanks again for coming.